Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Coach Oak Show on Coach Oak TV. You are here with Coach Oak himself, your head coach of the Eagy Town in Santa Roar. Um, so we are here with our PCBL Week 10 battle against Metro and the Everglade Electros, Mega Gardevoir, Arcanine, Star Raptors, Snorlax, Zoroark, Mudsdale, Aegislash, Keldeo, Decidueye, Dragalge, Gligar, and a Pikachu, which actually I was terrified of the Pikachu. Not gonna lie, because I was bringing the whole, like, we're going all in on this electric terrain here. Um, and Pikachu was the one I had the hardest time. And a Violet Pikachu or a Light Ball could have just broke things, and yeah, I didn't like any of what could have gone on. Um, to be completely honest, so I was really glad not to see a Pikachu, which sounds terrifying. Mudsdale and Gligar, those are the two that I kind of needed to break, and if I did, oh my goodness, Dukoko and Alolan Raichu put in the most work. Just the most work. You can see this is a very, very, very aggressive build on my part. This, as someone who likes hyper offense, this is just about as hyper offense as it goes. This is Coco, um, because his fastest thing on his team is a Keldeo, I was able to just be like, well, I go faster, now I break things. Um, so Coco is calm mind, actually, to pretty well predict he's going into Mudsdale with Grass Knot, um, and then Hidden Power Ice for the Gligar, and then Volt Switch, which probably should have been Thunderbolt, to be honest, um, but Volt Switch could have played in big in some situations, and really, yeah, it, I, I didn't think Coco would be around that long. It did have a Train Extender, basically to keep Raichu in a spot where Raichu could do some things, um, which was kind of, you know, the point. Um, Raichu had Nasty Plot. It did originally have Surf, which kind of hit both. Um, I did have to switch up the HPS when I realized um, that um, because it was a Pichu move misting, mi mixing with a Raichu move or something, I don't know. The Validate button didn't like it, um, and I hadn't hit the Validate button before that, to be completely honest. Um, so I was right before the battle, um, and it also had Focus Blast, which was Z-Focus Blast for that and nasty little Snorlax. Um, as well as being able to hit a whole lot of things pretty hard, and Thunderbolt as well. That is a Choice Scarf, a Typhlosion, Eruption, Extra Sensory for the Keldeo, um, b -b -b Lava Plume, and Focus Blast, I believe? Needle Queen, um, which, I mean, the Typhlosion, not gonna lie, mostly for the Age Slash, mostly for dealing with that. Um... Yeah, he, the team he brought, it was not the most useful bring, um, but I was glad to have it to, you know, see what it can do, and we'll see how that goes. We have a Needle Queen, who which is pretty fast, very offensive, Life Warp, Sheer Force, um, Earth Power, uh, Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, and probably Sludge Wave, but I can't remember for sure. Um, Mega Medicham, which of course is intended always to break things. Um, this one had Zen Headbutt, Fire Punch, Ice Punch, Thunder Punch. Maybe? feel like I'm mixing that. I'm missing one of those elemental punches I think was dropped. But I can't remember which. High Dragon's really my only support slash not hyper offense, and even it's kind of can do some things. Uh, Dark Pulse, U-Turn, Tailwind, and Defog. Um, yeah, so it's if it gets the Tailwind up, Mega Medicham and Needle Queen can do some mean things if it can U-Turn out. Um, with the Dark Pulse, it becomes faster and can flinch you. It's Pretty bulky, and I believe it had a Super Pinch Berry. Um, so I believe it was weaky. So let's see what happens. I'm going to just leave with Coco. It outspeeds everything that's not a Scarf. Um, I'm kind of expecting something kind of middle ground to come in. And him to switch it. Me to Combine first turn, him to go in the Mudsdale. And I'm hoping, it all depends on the build. I know the Mudsdale probably won't go down, but, you know, I can be hopeful that it will go down after that. So we will see. A tie of El Coco does come out. He doesn't lead the Gardevoir. Um, which does trace, which honestly at this time I didn't notice the trace, um, and I'll show you why that matters later, um, which is of course the bring. But Combine um, is going to go in there, boom, he's going to get the Grass Knot, he's going to live that, and we do find out the Earthquake will kill me, and the Lefties is going to come, so it's not an Assault Vest, um, so it was just a pretty bulky build. So I'm bringing this, I can still kill with Hidden Power Ice, kind of expecting him to leave, but I can't take the risk at this point, so I do Hidden Power Ice as the Snorlax comes out. I'm now going to Nasty Plot, not expecting him to be able to kill me, or expecting him to make a double. Um, and if I do get that up, I'm going to click that Nasty Plotted, 
double because I am a pretty bulky ride too. I'm not gonna lie. I don't have that much speed. The training center, like I'm playing this for train. He's gonna go make over wherever this is going way too fast. Let's slow this down for a second. The moment this clicked Surge Surfer, I was suddenly terrified. A, because, not gonna lie, I forgot this was a Mega Garvoir at the time. I don't know why. Um, and B, forgot we had to Mega. And C, was suddenly like, oh my goodness, he's faster, he's faster, he's faster, he's faster. Um, and then when he mega I was expecting him to both be faster and kill me, or to be bulky enough to take this. I actually didn't do this calc. I don't know why I did not do this calc. It was kind of like an important turn. But you will see that the Thunderbolt is just going to take the Gard Mega Gardevoir out straight away. I actually still haven't done the calc, I'm not going to lie. When I get playing Hyper Aggressive, I just go sometimes. Um, and this battle was definitely one of those. He's going to go into the Mudsdale. I'm kind of expecting him to double out into Snorlax, so I'm going to click the uh, Z fighting. He's going to go into Arcanine instead, which is, we will see how that is going to take this all-out pummeling. Hit him with those pancakes. Just like the New Day does, but no, he goes down. The crit, I don't think mattered, unless he was a super bulky Arcanine. Which I don't think he was, just based on how the mud set was bulky. Um, he's going to go into the Snorlax. By the way, Raichel Mundo being the friend of Taya Valcoco. If you're a wrestling fan, I find that funny. Um, and they both kind of fit. Anyways, so I do go to the Thunderbolt, which is going to do over half. I thought about hitting Focus Blast, didn't want to miss one of the damage. Thought I would live the Earthquake, so he's a more offensive Snorlax than I was expecting him to bring. Um, as I said, I am a very bulky, bulky Raichu. I think I'm 248 um, HP. Um, so it looked like either he max rolled or he was just more offensive build than I thought. But it's a Snorlax who's sitting in against Mega Medicham. I'm just getting Mega Medicham. I'm clicking that Zen headbutt in case he wants to go into Keldeo. He's going to hit the Star Raptor hard. Don't know if it's Intimidate, so it might not have killed the Raptor. It could have been a bit bulky. It's also going to hurt the mud, kill the Muddale from that range. But he's going to give me the Snorlax, chalk one up for the Mega Medi. After we had punched a couple holes with the Alolan Raichu, which was kind of the plan. He's going to go with Star Raptor. I don't want this to go down right yet. I'm going to pick a sack, basically, because it's a Star Raptor. And Typhlosion is that boy, because, you know, he can't hit things with extra sensory, but it's definitely not the most needed. Um, and this, if it's Scarf Raptor, it's a speed tie anyways. So, you know, it was just the most expendable because unless it was banded, adamant, brave bird, my dragon took this, got the tailwind up, which is what was needed here. So we're going to get the tailwind. I'm going to find out this is just, this was even more bulky. I must have high rolled the grass knot. This is even more bulky mudzo than I thought um, because we are going to click that dark pulse that I really thought would kill from here, even with a bulky, bulky, bulky. Mudsdale, uh, Spadefi, 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 but it does not. Um, but luckily we do get the flinch. If he had rest, that might have been game-saving. I'm not going to lie. Um, yeah, I, I haven't calced, like, Sheer Force Life Orb. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Thank goodness for the flinch. Good job, Zero Miedo. <laughs> we have no fear. Apparently the Mudsdale does because it flinched. We are going to take him out with the second Dark Pulse. You see, I only have one turn tail left, so I'm going to have to play this a little bit weird. I'm going into the Needle Queen now, um, kind of sacking it off, because without the Tailwind up, it's not having the most fun time. It can maybe take hits. He's going for the Focus Blast. Um, guessing now he's probably scarfed into Focus Blast. I thought I could live one with High Dragon thinking Sacred Sword, or Secret Sword. Um, and we find out, no, he's Focus Blast, which would have killed the High Dragon, so it was the right switch. Unfortunately, he does go ahead and miss twice. Which is not a friendly. Uh, Sheer Force, Life Orb, Thunderbolt is going to do a lot to the Keldeo. And he's finally going to connect with one. Which does crit, which, I mean, doesn't make the two misses feel any better, probably. Um, especially when the damage really wasn't the biggest concern. But we are going to take him out with another Thunderbolt. Um, I believe if both the first two had hit, he would have still been alive there. And then I would have had to gone Mega Medi, and he would have had to give me something, but I would have taken damage. Either way, um, I'm going to sack the Mega Medi now to the Brave Bird to get the damage off here. Um, High Dragon can take one, as I have said. So we're going into the High Dragon to get the Tailwind up and then get the win from there. Um, if things don't go completely and utterly wrong, like a crit Brave Bird would end my life right now. But he does not. He gets 60%. Uh, he takes the recoil. He's pretty low at this point, but I am going to get the Tailwind. Do outspeed, even Scarf. 
Raptor, which I don't think this... I don't know what this was, to be honest. I didn't do enough calcs. I was just playing. Uh, I had a lot of fun with this battle. We do pick up the win with the Dark Pulse. We do win 2-0. This is a massive battle for playoffs. Um, not only are we chasing Metro in the standings, I believe we were one game behind him. I think he's still ahead of us in differential. Um, not 100% sure there, to be honest. But we are we're going into this week 6 in the league. But we were 4th in our conference division. Division. Division is the word. Division, which was... Like top four, top four make playoffs. So we were sitting in fourth. So not in the most, you know, friendly of spots. Um, especially when we had one person who was right behind us who we still had to play, and we had to play Metro and Cav in the last three weeks, who were two of the top three teams in the league. So picking out this win over Metro, as I said, was a top three guy in the league. He might still be after this week, depending on other results. I'm not sure. So very good battler. Um, is huge for a playoff chance. It's absolutely massive. Um, so this very hyper-aggressive team, Coco, Alola, and Raichu, let's punch a hole. Um, the combination did kind of punch a hole. It took out two. It took a Medigar of our Arcanine um, and put half damage on the Snorlax, as well as a lot of Mudsdale. So it did definitely punch a hole. The combination of the two being super aggressive right from the start. Um, did its job, ended up sacking Mega Medi and Typhlosion. Hydreigon did enough support work that we were able to pull this out. Um, and that flinch may have been huge. May have been huge. I don't know for sure. But either way, GG to Metro. Hope you have a nice day because Coach Oak said so. And I will see you all next time.